Hello, beautiful people. I am here with my Mimi and uh, my mom. She's in the corner and doesn't want to be on camera today. So, um, as I always like to say, everyone has a story to tell, and I am interested in hearing Mimi's story of her life and what it was like growing up for her. Um, as we are going into this quarantine time, um, I guarantee she's probably never been through something like this before. Um, probably never even expected any of this to happen, but let's, let's hear what she has got to say what it was like growing up. Yay, let's get started. I think it's another one. <laughs> Alright. Ready? Alright, so tell me, what was it like? Okay, well I was born in Chinook, Kansas. Okay. That's where my parents were at the time. And we only lived there until I was like six months old and then we moved to somewhere in Texas. I don't remember that time, of course. So, uh, when I was two, my biological dad left my mother and my two older siblings. Dolores and Dick, <clears throat> and uh, mother had never worked before, but it was wartime, this would have been 1944 when he left, and uh, she went to work at Douglas, uh, which is now Tinker. Oh my goodness. She was a Rosie the Riveter. <laughs> she was very skinny, and she worked in the tail section of, inside the tail. I had no idea. Yeah, she did. She was about to turn that thing over. Um, anyway, um, my first really memories, I was about three, and we were at that time, after the war was over, uh, but she, they didn't need her at, at the Tinker anymore. So she went to work for Southwestern Bell as a telephone operator. Okay. And then she met, through her sister, um, a man that she married, and uh, we lived in Little Rock, Arkansas, and she transferred to there and was still continuing to work as a telephone operator. And <coughs> I went to a nursery school during the day, and the nursery school teacher was a retired first grade teacher. Oh my goodness. So she taught me and probably some of the other kids too, you know, all the first grade work. And so then when I was ready to start in public schools, they, they didn't really, I guess, have kindergarten then, because I was supposed to start in first grade. And uh, she went to the people and said, well, she's already done all first grade work. She needs to go into the second grade. <laughs> so they put me in second grade. But I was very little and skinny uh, mm -hmm. as a kid. And those kids were older and bigger. And mm -hmm. I was getting hurt a lot playing with them on recess. One little girl, we had those great big wooden seesaws that were about, what, eight feet long or ten feet long. Anyway, she got on one end and she told me to climb up to the other end, the end that was raised up. Oh, gosh. So I did. I went up there. And when I got there, she got mm -hmm. off of it. And down I went. Oh, and gosh. it sprained my left arm really bad. And I think that's when I probably jammed this finger. Oh God! See that little finger is oh, shorter than the other one. I have never noticed that. Huh? And this bone right in here feels really weird. It's bumpy, oh, and the other one isn't. So I'm thinking huh. that's when I hurt that. Which hand? This, this one. one. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, they moved me back mm -hmm. to the first grade. <laughs> Did so, you like it better than the second grade at that time? Or do you wish you stayed? I don't really remember. <laughs> so 
sounds like my phone or something. Oh, are you putting the pictures on my phone? Something's going on my phone. Isn't it? Uh, and we lived in Little Rock, and I had a lot of adventures then because they didn't have school buses then. Oh, we rode, had to ride public buses to and from school. Well, that's right. So, like, your so like, mama, like, just allowed you to uh, get on the bus? Uh, well, or did, did she go with you? No, no, she was working, mm, you yeah. know. And I had an older brother and sister, but I don't know whether they had already gone somewhere because uh, they probably started school earlier time than I did. I don't know. But anyway, one time I was waiting on the bus, public bus, and I had lost my bus money. Oh no. And so I stand there crying and some man, I remember this a little bit, but mother told me mostly about it later because anyway I was crying I told this man I lost my money so he gave me money to get on the bus mm -hmm. and so after that mother gave me extra money to give to him the next time I saw him at the bus stop and I never did see the man again Aww. so he was just kind nowadays mm -hmm. that would not happen right. I would have been kidnapped probably yeah you and would I, not like that would not go that would not fly nowadays. You be quiet. So another one of my adventures on the bus was I fell asleep on the bus coming home from school. Poor low Scott. And I rode to the end of the line. No, I woke up that time. What I I had two adventures. The, one time I, I woke back up and I knew I'd gone past my stop and here was this service station that I recognized that uh, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, traded at because I'd been with him a lot when he stopped there. Mm -hmm. So I got off there <laughs> and I went in and I told the guy at the service station to call Leo Scott, <laughs> he knew him, for him to come after me. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Leo was at work. He had a uh, jewelry repair shop then in North Little Rock. And I don't know whether the guy ever actually got a hold of him or not, but there was a lady that came in to the service station and she said, well, I'm going right back that way. I told them I lived where I live, just mm -hmm. off Roosevelt Road, which is a main drag in Little Rock. And uh, she said, well, I'll take her home. Aww. So another complete stranger <laughs> that I got in the car with, and she took me home. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I led an adventuresome childhood. You just wait. Oh, my gosh. So, um. Uh, Still never knew that lady or anything. So, uh, another time I fell asleep and I don't know where I'd been because it was dark. It must have been a school activity or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was dark when, and I had ridden clear to the end of the line and the bus driver said, found me in the bus. Or I'd have been locked up in the bus, I guess. Anyway, he ended up taking me back home then. How the heck did you not get kidnapped? I, well, <laughs> times were not that wild now as they are now. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, when I was in the third grade, we moved back here to Midwest City, Oklahoma. Another transfer again. She was still working for the telephone company. And my stepdad went to work at Tinker. And my sister and her husband were already here in uh, lived in Midwest City. And he worked at Tinker. So, and I still didn't live 
anywhere close enough to ride a school bus, so mm -hmm. I had to walk to and from school for years and years. And How far months. away was it? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. The grade school probably was not but about six or eight blocks. Blocks? But they were still building it. So I went to school in the barracks for... Uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, and uh, then uh, let's see. Then I went to junior high, Monroe Junior High, and they were still building it. And I went and I was in the barracks until ninth grade for it. Oh my goodness! But we, I was the first graduating class out of Monroe Junior High, and nice. our. Uh, one of our senators, Mike Monroney, came. It was named after him, and he came to our graduation. Hmm. So, I didn't realize that it was named after him. Yes. And uh, let's see. Then high school, I finally got to stay in the building all the time. I didn't have to be in the barracks. Yay. And uh, let me think. What was Fun about my high school years. I uh, sang. I had. I was in vocal music all the time, and that's where you learned how to use your amazing voice. Uh, well, <laughs> I started out singing soprano. Then I changed to septic soprano, and now I'm an alto. So, but uh, anyway, I was in a, a triple trio, mm -hmm. and we sang a lot, and. Uh, then, uh, of course, I had dated several different boys throughout. <laughs> Did you ever think you were going to marry any of them? Like, no. Never did think any of them I was going to marry until I met them. Mm -hmm. And I met him through one of my girlfriends. He is was a distant cousin of hers, and he was at her house visiting one day. And I was over there and met him. Aww. And uh, he was almost 10 years older than me. Oh, gosh. And uh, he was an engineer, tinker. And that was a big thing. <laughs> the mask. <clears throat> so uh, I had planned to go to college, had been uh, accepted to OSU, even had a, a dorm partner picked mm -hmm. out and all that and so then I got engaged during my senior year in high school and the first the plans were I was going to go to go ahead and go to OSU for a couple of years and then we'd get married yeah and then we decided well I could just go to OU and be closer that way it wouldn't be so far away but they're the wrong colors. I know. I'm sure and glad I never did do that. Great. So then it was going to be, you know, well, we can go ahead and get married and I can still go to school. But didn't do that either. <laughs> so anyway, we got married in uh, 1960. I had graduated in May in 1960, and we got married in July 1960. Harlow. Uh, and, um, we, uh, we had a very nice wedding at our church and stuff. And, uh, let's see. Now you were going to go to college. I was going to, yes. And why didn't you? Well, is it because the person in the corner came along? Well, that, <laughs> yeah, but I, I if uh, if I was going, well, let's see, I got married in July, end of July, and uh, I guess if I was going to go to school, I would have started in August or September, but I did not. I guess we decided that. We were doing fine the way things were. So, and then I found out I was pregnant. And 
Bill was an only child, so he was thrilled to death. Oh, I bet. So, and uh, so Robin came along uh, in July of 61. Oh, my And uh, she was a blessing, of course. Are you sure about the... <laughs> She and has her moment. I think I was a perfect baby. Uh, no, you were not. You, I had to either hold you, uh, rock you, or pat you <laughs> all the time. Carrie. No, that was you to go to sleep. So, so Carrie was the easy one. You no. learn a lot <laughs> that they can cry themselves to sleep. No. Uh, and talking about crying herself to sleep when. Uh, Later on, um, when she was like what, 16 months old, Bill had a TDY trip to a uh, base in Central Florida and was going to be gone for quite a while. Right. So, so we went. I talked to the doctor. I was, like I said, seven months pregnant. And he said, yes, you can go, but you better fly home whenever you get ready to come home. Oh, instead of, like, driving? Yeah. That's a long way from here to Florida. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when we got there, we rented a, an apartment. It was a little two-bedroom apartment. And uh, she, Robin... We got it. We rented a baby bed, had it in there, and she just was, of course, it was a strange place for her, too, and I know that was part of it, but she started this same thing, of wanting to be held, rocked, patted, oh, something the whole time before <laughs> she'd go to sleep. So, after several nights, Harlow, down, down. Of her crying, we just left her in there, and mm -hmm. she gagged herself. Oh my God! She was in there retching and making all kinds of noise. And we didn't go in there. We left her. <laughs> so finally, it got quiet, and she went to sleep. So the next morning, when I went in there, here's throw up in the bed, and it's all over her. How mean! That's <laughs> awful. Did I ever do anything like that? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure he did. I don't think he did. But she Harlow. didn't. She didn't do that anymore. Oh, sure. she, she was smart enough to learn from that trick. She didn't do that anymore. So you just let her sleep in her own bed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, you be quiet, Carlo. Sit, sit. Good girl. Oh, I can't shake your hand. My hands are wet. Carlo. Carla, oh, go you there outside. I got her. You go out, you're staying out. Come on, mm -hmm. I shall be back. So anyway, we were in Central Florida for two months. That was before Disney was there. Oh, goodness. Wait, before Disney? Yes, that was before Disney. Way before. That Whoa! Was, well, that was 1962. So, anyway, we got ready to come home in December, and the car was just packed down with all the stuff that we had taken with us, and everything that we bought while we were there, and it was just before Christmas, and I thought, oh, I just can't stand for Bill to drive all that way by himself, and for Robin and I to fly home, so we decided I would just do, we would ride home in the car. And we would just stop real often so I could get out and move around yeah. since I was nine months pregnant. I, I can't think. believe that. So, uh, we did. We started and we went home. Bill said he, every house, town we went through, he looked to see if they had a hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, we made it to Hot Springs, Arkansas, which is where his parents lived, and we stopped. And we had Christmas with them, and uh, then we loaded up the three of us again, and we came home on the 
24th of December to our house in Midwest City. Oh, wow. And Carrie was born the 31st of December. <laughs> a week later, so. Hey, at least she waited. That's yeah. cutting it close. Yeah. It was cutting it pretty close. This is the only one that really can go. So, uh, after that, our adventures were uh, schools with the girls and being homeroom mother and bill planning trips. And was it everything you like ever imagined motherhood to be? Oh, I guess. I guess you, you don't really know until you experience it yourself. Is yeah. what it is. And we were really uh, fortunate and blessed that Mother and Paul lived just five blocks from us, so the girls uh, got to stay with them quite a bit, and and they babysat while we went out with friends on Friday or Saturday night, and, stuff. and, and uh, we were. Are you going after your no. dog again? No, she can just stay out there and work. Well, the neighbors won't like that. Ah, uh, so. So. Uh, See, Bill's parents still lived in Arkansas, and uh, he, his dad had arthritis, so it was really bad. So uh, they decided to sell their farm, and we went down and helped with the sale that they had, and and then it was they, like an auction, wasn't it? It was an auction. And it sold the cattle, sold the land, sold all kinds of equipment and stuff like that. Like cattle as in like moo cattle? Yes. Yeah. They raised uh, cattle. Huh. And and they cut hay and sold hay. Do they uh, use the cattle for like butchery or like milk or? Just, no, they were, they were beef cattle, not, okay. not milk cattle. And uh, so anyway, after they sold that, they moved here to Midwest City and bought a house right next to my parents. Aww. So then the girls had two sets of grandparents that they could visit with and do things with. And that was in 1975, wasn't it? Somewhere, wow. somewhere around there. Uh, so we also had started camping a lot. We started out, we bought a tent. And we had the tent and we, well no, even before we had a tent, we we took tarp and we tied it up between trees to have a little shade and we were at state parks that had a picnic table and all that. Aww. And uh, we slept in lawn chairs and all that. <laughs> And like not even sleeping bags, just lawn chairs. No, just lawn chairs. Oh my God. And uh, so then after that, we got a tent, and we kept it for a while. Did we go with you? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We went. Mother and Pa, and, and you two, and Dennis and Barbara. That's a younger brother and sister <laughs> that I got when Mother remarried. Um, Anyway, we uh, graduated to a cab over, a pickup cab over camper, and we kept it for a while. Is that the camper that like sits on the back of the pickup mm -hmm. truck? Okay. Yeah. And then after that, we went we went really uptown, and Mother and Pa and Bill and I both got we got fifth wheels. Oh my goodness! Oh man, we were living in high cotton. <laughs> We had all the comforts of home. Wasn't that right, Robin? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Is, 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 that, is that why you are more like yeah. camper and not tent? Yeah, she, I don't know how I survived. She is an indoor camper. Even after we had the city city camper. Remember, that's what y'all call me. Well, anyway, she, she stayed inside in the air conditioning. So you haven't changed much at all, have you? Know. Well, as a little child, she was one that if she fell down and and tore her dress or her pants or she got dirty, she'd cry. 
Oh my god. She did not like to be messed up or dirty or or get spankings. I, I know that story and her nosebleeds. Oh well. Oh well. We turned we found out that her nosebleeds were we thought that she did it on purpose, or Carrie for sure did. Yeah. But now when she was little, uh, we found out she had some kind of a, I guess, inside her nose a blood vessel that was very fragile. Yeah, and that's what caused her nose bleeds all the time. So. Right. Yeah, you right? know, did you know that Mimi had to uh, leave me one time with a stranger? Yes, she told no, me that. No, she yeah, no, Carrie. Carrie. Carrie was the next door neighbor, right? Across, no, it was across the street. Yeah. I had no, Robin had a, a big swollen place on the side of her neck that was hard as a rock. She oh, was like no. two and a half. I thought I had a nose, please. No, well, first you had this thing on your neck, and I had we had an appointment for me to take her to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we were very fortunate by then we had two cars bill was at work and i had a car so i was gonna i had her all dressed to go to the doctor and of course carrie was a baby she right. was like six months old maybe and uh we got ready to go and she started having a nosebleed oh my god and she bled and she bled and she bled and she bled and i couldn't get it stopped and i was frantic and so i went both my next door neighbors, neither one of them were home. My across the street neighbors, neither one of them were home. Went another house down across the street. Both the kids are in the house then. She's standing on the, the stool bleeding. But Carrie's probably screaming her head off. I don't know. Oh my God. Anyway, this uh, one neighbor, her mother was visiting. And I didn't know her and never met her. And I said, I need help. And so she came to the house with me. And uh, I'm trying to think. I think I don't. I don't remember. I know she was holding Carrie. So I'm. A, I, I think I can't remember for sure whether I was driving and she was holding you or Carrie. Oh God! Uh, you told what? me she you left her there. Well, yeah, hang on. No, oh. she went with us to the doctor's oh, okay. office. <laughs> so then when we got there, they took Robin and I right in to the. Uh, we didn't have to stay in the waiting room. We went back into the exam room, oh, and the doctor came right in. Same doctor that delivered both Robin and Carrie, okay. and had been my doctor ever since I was, I don't know. Dr. Nelson. Yeah, kid. Aww. Anyway, he was in there with me, and the nurse was in there with us, and also the guy that worked in the lab uh, what was his first name? Daryl Dudley. Dudley Maytubby was his name. Dudley Maytubby. That's the greatest name in the face of the well, name. He was, he was Indian. American Indian. Okay. Anyway, uh, so this lady that I did not know was holding my baby out in the waiting room. Oh my gosh. So after so long a time, uh, somebody came in and said, this lady said, if you give her the keys to your car, she would take the baby home with her. <laughs> so I did. Who would do that these days? Right? Nobody. Like, nobody would do that. So Just give your keys and your baby away. <laughs> well, in the meantime, we had called Bill, and he came from Tinker. Oh my he gosh. got there. And so anyway, besides her nose bleeding, she's having a fit because uh, Dr. Nelson is holding her nose and it took the doctor, the nurse, and me to hold this two-year-old down. Jesus, mother! She was screaming and bleeding and all, crying and everything. Well, she finally... And you oh, thought I was and bad. in the meantime, while she, this, she started having this... Looked like pieces of liver or something. They were lighter colored than liver, but they were coming out. And oh, they got her nose? Her nose and her mouth. It's and blood clots is what it no, was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it, was it was infection. It was infection. Is well, what I used to still get those. Well, you got blood clots later when you'd hold your nose, finally. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, she finally just kind of passed out. Oh, my gosh. So the doctor then 
or Dudley said, well, I, all this blood she's lost, I need to draw blood. So he, they had to take some out of her arm, her leg. I don't remember where they took it. They scooped up some of it that was No, they bigger. had to have, I guess, but blood that wasn't coated with this yeah. infection. Yeah. But anyway, when they, after they got that report back, the doctor came in and told us that to begin with, he was afraid she had leukemia. Oh my gosh. But she because had of, like the nosebleeds? Well, that and the this infection whatever it was was infection in a lymph gland or oh whatever. Oh my gosh. So but she when she was little she also had ear infections all the time. Okay. And uh, one year when Bill was doing the taxes he figured he looked and said, We had fifty two visits to the doctor. So that was like one a week. Here you go, Allison. That's hey, I'm not point. the only one. I'm not the only one. <laughs> and so when she was four, they took her tonsils and adenoids out. Okay. And that helped with the ear infections. That was before they did tubes. Okay. Is that why I never got mine taken out? Because you had the tubes. tubes. The tubes mm -hmm. worked. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um... Uh, Anyway, that was one of her sagas. <laughs> and stuff. Did you have any crazy incidences like that growing up? Like, oh, I met, you know, when I was little, I mean, we didn't do doctors that much, you know, couldn't afford doctors. And right. That stuff. I said that falling off of the teeter totter was just one of the biggest ones. Of course, I went through having. Measles and mumps and all that stuff. What was that like? Because, like, you, you guys didn't really do vaccines back then, did you? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't have that many vaccines. The oh, only right. thing I was vaccinated for was the... Uh, oh, yeah. No, that was even later, too. What was the one where they do your arm and you get that mark on your arm? Oh. Uh, sweet TV? Mm, what is it? It might be tuberculosis. I don't know. Anyway, that's what everybody used to have, you know. Uh, it sounds like the tuberculosis. So, uh, but then in grade school, they we used to have the county nurses association or somebody would come out, and mm -hmm. they gave us all kinds of vaccines. Then we, I got typhoid fever shots and. We got those too at school. You used yeah. to be at school instead of like the doctors. Yeah. Like huh. The nurses came to the, and uh, then uh, polio, we got, the first thing we got was a sugar cube with a drop of something or other on it, and that's what we took, and then later it was a vaccine, but um, when I was in junior high, I did have one episode, I, I used to get strep throat a lot, okay. and I had just gotten over strep throat. And one of my knees swelled up pretty big. And, and is it the knee that you have issues with now? Or no, is it no, it was, it was a different one. Okay. And so mother took me to the doctor then, and they first thought I had, I don't remember what it was, some, something. Uh, because I had just gotten over strep throat, and then I had this, so they thought something, the, the bacteria or whatever, the infection of the stuff yeah. had settled in that joint. But they ran tests and whatever, and they said, nope, she just has arthritis. Oh, gosh. Now, I was in junior high. So, How was that? Like well, I know Nathan struggled with it. Well, um, and your mom does, of yeah. course. Uh, not that well, young. Yeah, she she was not like, that young, but because uh, I know Nathan has medicine and stuff that's helped. Like, what did they do? Well, he you? got juvenile juvenile. They didn't do anything for me. Nothing. I didn't have medicine or nothing. I just if I had a joint swelled up or I was hurting, I just hurt. Oh gosh, and. Uh, Talking about Robin's nosebleeds, I had had a couple issues with nosebleeds in my growing up years too. One time, um, I was with my aunt and uncle, Maxine and Raymond, and we were going to California to see uh, my grandparents. 
and that for some reason they went the southern route <laughs> down that was before interstates anyway they were going through the Arizona or New Mexico somewhere where it was really dry and whatever yeah well evidently I was uh, allergic to something of course okay. that was also before car air conditioning yeah. and I started sneezing okay. and I sneezed and I sneezed and I sneezed until my nose started bleeding so they stopped in some town and we went to the drugstore and my aunt told them what was going on and they gave me something <laughs> that I guess probably Benadryl or something I don't know yeah. anyway that was one of my nosebleed stories another one so I got that from you too <laughs> well maybe all the all the secrets are coming out today. <laughs> one of the the other one that I can remember, I had had uh, I don't know whether it was strep throat or bad cold or whatever it was. I'd had something, and they said, "Well, boil salt water, mm -hmm. and then when it gets cool, put those droppers fulls of of salt water in your nose." and of course, that about drowns you when you're trying to do that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I start sneezing and sneezing and sneezing. And my nose start bleeding. Well, at that time, Dolores, my older sister, lived just around the corner from us. <laughs> so I called her. And she came down and helped me through that, I guess. So were you and Dolores really close growing up? No, she was 13 years older than me. Okay. She was like a second mom, really, oh, wow. because the mother worked. Yeah. And uh, she uh, she took care of me a lot. Mm. And so I stayed, after she got married even, I stayed with them a lot. Oh, that's so sweet. And uh, I can remember some of the houses that they lived in. And I used to walk and talk in my sleep, too. Oh, God. Wait, like, like, literally, like, what, yes. like did, you, did you, like, leave the house at some point? No, I didn't okay. leave the house, but I would wander and talk, and people could stop and talk to me, and I'd talk to them. Like, full conversations, sound asleep. Well, I don't know about full conversations, because <laughs> I'm sure they made me go back to bed, because I woke them up. But Oh, my God. And then, even when, uh, later on, Mother would... She worked strange hours at the telephone company. And she'd call me sometimes, and I'd be asleep, but I'd just get up and answer the phone and talk to her. <laughs> and she knew I was asleep because I didn't make sense. But, oh my goodness. But, uh, just wanted to hear your mama's voice and I, in your sleep. I don't know. Well, like I said, I, since uh, things were different like I said with growing up mm -hmm. I started cooking meals for the family because mother went yeah, home when I was like eight years old oh, Mimi's a good cook oh yeah I Mimi's would, the best cook I would and uh, a lot of a lot of weird things happen yeah. off and on through my life but, so did y'all like have anything like scary like this like Epidemic wise, or anything like that back then, besides like the no, I guess the and closest thing that we had was the polio outbreak mm -hmm. that they had in the 50s, okay. and uh, a lot of people were in iron lungs, yeah, and everything. But that's when they got the vaccine well, the sugar cubes with the stuff, and yeah, and stuff, and we had those so. That's good. How do you but, feel about all the people in the anti-vaxxers right now? Like, and the smallpox coming back, and like, what's well, your Well, I think, I think they're ridiculous and not wanting to vaccinate their kids. Yeah. Because it not only puts their kids at risk, it puts other kids at right. risk. That So, I think that's ridiculous. They need to use the vaccine. Yeah. Because, I mean, but, you were there when... It was happening, like especially the polio and stuff. And yeah. Like well, and now with this epidemic we're going through now, COVID nineteen. Yeah. They're looking back at a hundred years ago, the Spanish flu that killed thousands of people. Yep. And uh, people were wearing masks back then too. Yeah. So. This is crazy. So. But let's see. Let's jump back to yeah. uh, our camping years. Like I said, we. 
we had boats and we fished and we uh, water skied and uh, we had friends that we camped with, Buddy and Betty White. And, oh, I love Betty White. And uh, their kids that we camped with and stuff. And uh, we played, uh, Robin and Carrie and I all were on the ladies and girls softball team at church. <laughs> and uh, Jimmy was on the, that was before, of course, he and Carrie were married, but he was on the boys and men's team. We used to take uh, all of them. There were several of the team members whose families had boats and we'd go to the lake and take them and we'd uh, water ski from daylight to dark nearly. And was water that. skiing your favorite thing to do or was like tubing a thing or? Oh we did a little tubing. We had, <laughs> we had this one thing that we found that was probably what six or seven feet across oh, <laughs> big round thing it took forever to blow it up and it wasn't hollow it was just a big tooth thing and you could get up and bounce on it and that thing and throw you off and you couldn't get it was hard to get on <laughs> yeah it takes three or several people holding it onto it for somebody else to get on oh gosh and during one of those episodes carrie was trying to get on and Buddy White was one of the ones hanging on to it, and he grabbed her and did something, and it pulled her bathing suit top off. <laughs> oh, she was embarrassed to death. She ran to the camper oh. and crying and everything else, mm -hmm. and he was the deacon at the church. And he said, oh, the deacon at the church pulled her off her swim <laughs> Never lived that one down, huh? No, it was funny, oh. but, she, but she got over it and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, it wasn't too many years after that that uh, I found out Bill had cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was hard. That was hard. Yeah. I couldn't even imagine. One of the things I remember right the day, the day or two days after that we found out. He was in the hospital, and Rob McCurry came up back to school. He to the hotel. Mm. Yeah. And we were just in the middle of telling them, and the nurse came in and said, y'all gonna have to leave, took Rob McCurry and I'm, I've gotta do something or other. And so I ended up telling them out in the hallway. Oh, I don't remember that. Mm. But, yeah. but anyway, we went through some hard times then. Yeah. And uh, they had said with treatment, he should live five years or longer. That uh, radiation and chemo and that was before they did ports. Yeah. So they had he was getting stuff all the time. Yeah, he had to be in the hospital because they put it directly into his veins. Yeah. And uh, so uh, there was lots of trips back and forth to the hospital, and when he had to stay in, got where he had to. <laughs> what do you? Oh, when he got where he. Stayed in longer and longer. I stayed at the hospital with him, and the girls were kind of left on their own at home. Thank goodness Robert was driving by then. And she would bring him up in the afternoons to see him. And, uh, and we'd do our homework up there and stuff like that. At least you guys were able to spend that time. Yeah. And yeah. When, Carrie and Jimmy came all dressed up in the uh, formal. They were going to the prom or something. They came. We got pictures of that. And stuff. So, That's amazing. Anyway, like I said, they had told us five years or longer, and it was less than two. So, what kind of cancer did he have? He had lymphoma, non Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
and then another. You know, it was, it was, he didn't get to go to Robin's graduation. Uh, and, uh, but he didn't carry, of course, he wasn't at either of their weddings. Yeah. Didn't get to see you three grandkids. Mm -hmm. So oh, that was, with us. well, and he'll meet y'all someday. Oh, yeah. So, and I know some people say, oh, then they look down from heaven and see what's going on, but I'm not sure that's true because they would see all the sad times as well. Yeah. And uh, in heaven, there's not supposed to be any sadness. That's mm -hmm. right. So, anyway, are you done? Yeah. Just, okay. What do you think? They look pretty. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, yes. Oh, you got a design on yeah, the other Yeah, she put a design nice. on the Oh, so. Nice. Oh, yeah. So. After that, I had two son-in-laws that have been very good mm -hmm. to our families and helping them. Mm -hmm. And then you grandkids came along, which was a real blessing. Oh, she's given she's given <laughs> all the dolls to wipe her eyes and <laughs> of Kleenex. I don't have Kleenexes in here. I'm gonna let her in and get it. So uh, okay. Kleenexes are in the oh, yeah. bedroom. So, and, and like I said, that went, I went along by myself for, of course, right, both the kids were still at home when Bill died, and then Robin married, and he was gone, and then Carrie went away to school at OSU, and then she and Jimmy married and was gone, and I was by myself a long time, and then a guy came along that I thought I could to trust and believe what he said, but it turned out I couldn't. Yeah. So, uh, and that happened twice. Two guys that I thought I could be happy with and trust and have a life with, but that didn't work out. So, since then, it's been just me. Robin and Carrie and Jimmy and Steve and you three grandkids. <laughs> and Zoe. And so and Bert well. Bert and Bert Ernie. Oh yeah, I've always had dogs. <laughs> and uh, someday we who knows, Matt may be part of the family too. Well, we'll right. see. Yeah. He's a good, he's a keeper. I I, I yeah, say he's, he's a keeper. A, he's a good sure. guy. Yeah. So helping. Helping Hannah build chicken coops. So. <laughs> yeah. And gets along really great with Nathan and Uncle Jimmy both. Oh, yeah. And, and Carrie. And now, oh, now we've got Katie. She yeah, was Katie. part of the family. Yeah. And maybe someday we'll get, I'll get a great grandchild. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. We shall see from either Nathan and Katie or Hannah and Matt. Who yeah. knows? And we don't know about you either. No. But only time shall tell. Only time will tell. <laughs> but I keep saying I don't don't wait till I can't I'm too old to hold a great grandbaby and help take care of them. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. But uh, besides all the trials and stuff, I've had many blessings. Yeah. Do you have like any, would you have any advice on how to handle loss of like your spouse for like if that scenario comes up with like me or somebody else? Well, uh, I was very blessed that I had my parents mm -hmm. still there with me and Robin and Terry. I still had a purpose in life. Yeah. And I had my faith. In the Lord. Yeah. All my church friends and stuff were very good to us. I had more food in the freezer <laughs> than in the refrigerator. <laughs> you can imagine I had flowers and plants everywhere in the house. Is that where you got your green thumb? Is just oh, like taking care of those? I don't or? have a green thumb. I well, not. I remember I've never seen so many people at the hospital when Oh, Daddy yeah. was so close to dying. 
Because oh, that whole hospital floor was full of just their friends. Oh, so sweet. Well, and the nurses came in and tell them goodbye. Oh. And uh, the hospital room was full of his parents, my parents, Robin and Terry, uh, Morris and Judy, Don and Jim, mm. Jimmy Don. <laughs> And then out in the hallway, there, Bill and Helen Phillips were there, and uh, some of his Sunday school department. Oh, he yeah. was he was the director of our he Sunday taught, school department. Well, and, I thought he taught young Mary, is what it was. Well, it was adult too, is what it oh, was okay. then. Um, and uh, a lot of them were there. The hallways were full. Yeah. And um, of course, his service was. Huge. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. And he wanted the choir to sing. Uh, and uh, we sang I'll Fly Away. Oh, such a good song. And The King is Coming. Oh, and, uh, and that's been 40 years uh, this year. Yeah. And now we're on the 25th anniversary of our bombing memorial. Like, I tell you, things have happened through yeah. a lifetime that you never thought would ever happen. I don't know. But I guess that's part of what makes life so interesting I got and fun. Up. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting and fun. And I hope that and didn't show snot coming out of my nose on your picture. So, anyway. Here we are, up to, date, up to date. Yeah. And oh, one thing I was going to mention to you, since we just celebrated your birthday yesterday, your 27th birthday oh on April 18th, <laughs> and today's the anniversary of the bombing. Yeah. You know that little one-year-old that everybody saw the picture of the yeah. fireman holding her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that was her, her grandpa. Was our mayor at the time? He was city mayor at oh the time, Alman. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when they had that special on the other night, and they interviewed her mm -hmm. mom, and she looks a lot different. Now. Mm -hmm. really, I mean, she looks like she's really aged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't realize her birth that little yeah. Bailey Alman's birthday was the 18th yeah. of April. Yeah. Oh my God. She had cel just celebrated her birthday on the 18th, and mm -hmm. the bombing was the 19th. Oh, so that yeah. was the first, her first birthday. And she was uh, famous, I guess, worldwide because of that picture. But, yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. anyway. Okay. The world's a crazy My place. nails are done. They're beautiful. beautiful. Can you see them? Yeah. Let me go grab them. Let me take a close up of my wrinkled old hands. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, you now have most <laughs> of my life history. Well, I really appreciate it and sharing your story with me. And I've always like, I wish I'd done this with, like, Aunt Maxine and, um... Well, Barbara set up a camera years ago <laughs> to record Mother and Paul. Yeah. And they wouldn't talk. They oh, wouldn't goodness. tell us anything. <laughs> Leo would say, turn that thing off. Oh, yeah, my gosh. That's true. So, but... Well, I really appreciate it. Do you have anything else to say? Like, any good advice to end with? Stay close to the Lord. Be happy. Yep. <laughs> Look for the future. Never give up. Never give up. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Mimi. I love you. I love you too.